Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Jokin Comic Center and this is yet another wrap-up video for what I read last month. And last month, I mentioned that I didn't think that I would have the time to read as much now in March. So, I was wrong. <laughs> this was one month where I got the most books read and I think I'm a master procrastinator in that. So, clearly I'm avoiding something might be the exams, but I got some books read, so let's see what those are. Okay, so let's start off where we left off. Last time I was still in my big Spider-Man reading marathon, and now I can finally say I finished it. And man, it was so worth it. Going back to 1960, where Stanley and Steve Ditko started the Amazing Spider-Man, all up until the end of the Dan Slot era. So, here's where we left off. This is The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2 out of... I think this is Volume 3 when they revamped and republished it from number 1. And yeah, it has the Spider-Verse event, but it's also double-dipped a lot with the Spider-Verse book itself. Which I also, of course, read. And yeah, it took me maybe one or two days. The, Mapping of this book is not the greatest, but I still love this event and it is one of the biggest high points when it comes to The Amazing Spider-Man. And then I started on the last volume by Dan Slott when it comes to Spider-Man, which is the Worldwide series. And yeah, the Worldwide series is actually one of my favorites, just because it's new. I mean, of course, Peter is a poor man, Tony Stark with this one, having his own company and everything, but at least they, they are original at some points. And yeah, I just love the Peter Parker and Norman Osborn relationship within this one that he's building up to the very end. Then there is, of course, volume two of Worldwide as well. So here we have actually Spider-Man clashing up with Iron Man. And then we also have Worldwide Volume 3, which also double dips a few issues together with the Clones Conspiracy hardcover. And yeah, that's why we have one or two volumes here that are quick reads, because I read these issues in another book and I'm not going to reread it. But I'm still trying to be a completionist with this, so double morale, right? And here it is, of course, the Clone Conspiracy Howard cover. And I really like this because Dan Slott is brave to, enough to actually bring that up again because everything published by Amazing Spider-Man in Marvel pretty much is canon. But they try to go around the Clone Saga as much as possible, but he just goes for it and actually makes the Clone Saga important once again within the story. And I should not forget to mention these two paperbacks, uh, Final Worldwide Paperback and Venom Inc, which I showed you in my, uh, what I had in my to read pile a few weeks ago. And yeah, finally something scratched off that to read list and actually I'm getting through a lot more books this month that actually was on that list. It just feels great to scratch off books that has been waiting for you to read them. And yeah, now I can go on to the next one. And then, last but not least, for the dance lot era and the Amazing Spider-Man Marathon, the Red Goblin hardcover. And it was so worth it, working up to this point, as I said. I cried reading issue number 800. And I must say, by issue number 801, I've really, really grown a fan to uh, Marcus Martin's artwork. I've seen it in Daredevil and I've seen it in several Amazing Spider-Man collections now reading up to this, but I must say I really like his style drawing Spider-Man. And yeah, it's just a beautiful conclusion. And unless Nick Spencer gets an omnibus, this is the end. But then of course there are also original graphic novels out there, some of them at least, and this one was a long time ago since I reread, but now I finally reread it and still glad to have this in my collection. This is Spider-Man Family Business 
And yes, this introduces a new family member in Peter's life. Not really a spoiler because this is on the description of the story itself. Peter Parker has a sister. It's not that thick, it's barely a hundred pages, but I really like it and it feels like a movie being played out before your eyes because the artwork is by G Gabriel Delotto, the very same artist that inspired my Batman tattoo. And yeah, I just love his artwork, of course, by that. And yeah, like I said, it feels like a short movie. They surely could adapt this to a movie because it has the Kingpin in it and some other C-listers, but this is really a Kingpin being the villain story. Okay, so let's pause here for a second. Hi, I'm editing this video right now as we speak and I was looking for pictures to put in to uh, whenever I bring up a new title within the video and such. And I went down the list and I noticed that there are several books that I read this month that I'm not even showing you in this video. And two of them are Deadly Class by Rick Remender, which I really liked. And I'm keeping those to await for the third and hopefully last volume of that series. So very much looking for, for that. And then there's also Venom, the Deluxe Edition Volume 2 that I recently showed you in the haul video. I read that also. And then I sold those off because I just, I didn't feel it, the second volume. But uh, with that, you're all caught up and yeah, this just goes to show if you do not have the books in your shelf, you'll forget that you even read them. So yeah, let's go back to the video. I'm still not done showing you Marvel books because now when I've read all of my Spider-Man books, I'm so close to have have reread all of my Marvel books that I have in my shelf. They only take up four shelves right now, or four shelf rows, that is. And yeah, I just went for it. And I reread this one as well. Gillen's Darth Vader run. I still think this lives up to the hype. Maybe not as strong as the first time, but it is a very solid run. Still love it. Still gonna pick up the Charles Soul one once it's adapted to the Omnibus. Now when I've sold the hardcovers, just to lower the numbers on my bookshelf. So, yeah. But I really like this one. And I pray for a hardcover reprint of this one for those that wants to read it. But one book I did read that is getting a reprint is this one, Alias Omnibus by Brian Michael Bendis and Michael Gatos. And yeah, this one read so fast. I think it took me two days and always with Brian Michael Bendis' work, I think so fluent with the dialogues and everything. You open up a spread page of two people just talking and half the page is word bubbles. Usually you would step back seeing that, but I just step forward because I know it's good stuff, at least in my opinion. And it just reads so quickly, it's like watching a TV show. So yeah, that's what I say about pretty much all of Venice's work when I read them. And yeah, I really like the tone and I really like Jessica Jones within this one. And I really like the TV show that I felt was pretty damn accurate to this one. And yeah, so Alias, getting a reprint soon. And then we have some manga books. <laughs> I also read manga. And yeah, these are the ones that I recently showed you in the haul video last week. And yeah, so here we have Ultraman, Volume 14, still going strong, and Full Metal Alchemist, Volume 10, and Volume 11. I felt that these ones took place with some characters that weren't as developed as the two Elric brothers within the Full Metal Alchemist, so they were kind of 
forgetful, I, I guess. I'm not really gonna dive into talking about the Full Metal Alchemist story right here, right now. But I did read them and still looking forward to the conclusion. And I think I'm at least two thirds into the whole series now. I, I expect six more volumes and then we're there. And yeah, it's still going strong. I still really like the artwork and really grown a fond of Elric Brothers within the series. And here are some more books that I read that I finally could scratch off from my to read list that was never touched because they were simply upgrades from paperbacks. And that is Saga by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. And I love this so much. I got through volume two and I also got through volume three. And now we're here again. We're just waiting for the second half of this beautiful, beautiful series to continue. Still, if they would publish this in a thicker format than this, that is hardcover, not the compendium, I would still stick with these. These are perfect in size. I feel that this fourth time now when I've read it, I get it so much better with what Brian K. Wong is trying to say with the series. And uh, yeah, it's just, I'm ready for more, whenever. And then we have another image series by another big writer, that is Jonathan Hickman. And yeah, I've been waiting and waiting to read the conclusion to this, East of West. And I've reread it each and every time that a brand new volume came out because that's just Jonathan Hickman. You need to piece all the pieces together right then and there. So that is why I tried to really read this very fast in just two days. I finished the whole series in two days. <laughs> and I still don't think that I got everything. But damn, the ending was satisfying and it was more emotional than I would expected from all the characters within it and yeah it's a damn good journey so this is of course volume one and here we have volume two which I also read of course and last but not least East or West volume three with Babylon on the cover which I think looks really good along this journey reading Jonathan Hickman's work I really grown fond to the Dragotas artwork. Is it John Dragoda? It's John Dragoda. Nick. Nick Dragoda's artwork. I've really grown a fan to that. And then last but not least, one more book. And that is the IDW Transformers Volume 12. This should be the final volume for Phase 2. And we now are waiting for Phase 3 to start off with the hardcover collections and I have no idea how many more volumes that is gonna be, but I'm in it to the end, because I need to see Unicron appear to end off the series, because that's how it has to end. It feels like it's building up to something. And yeah, I have one more book, but that is actually one that I've half read and don't think I should include in this video, or maybe. It's the Teenage Mutants Ninja Turtles Volume 11. I'm halfway through it, and yeah, this series keeps on going. And it feels like every time I bring up the next volume, because I've never reread it from the start, still catches me up to speed because I start remembering things each and every time that I read the, the next volume. So that is really good. And these are some of the best mapped out collections out there with all the one shots and mini series that occur at the same time as the main series they're all included in this one and are mapped out perfectly to those issues so yeah maybe I'll show you this in the next video as well but we'll see so that's it those are all the books that I read the month of March I swear and to myself watching this video, either in the editing or whenever you go back into this video to watch the comments. Get to work, damn it, the exams are coming up. 
And then of course, all of you that are watching this video just to get some reading positivity and want to tackle your own books, go and do that now. Your books are waiting for you. And to all of you that are clicking on this video, I thank so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to give a like and subscribe to see more reading positive videos. And I thank you so much for watching this one and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye bye.